truly considered GPP. I'm having a hard time distinguishing between SPP, GPP for SPP and GPP. Can you please help? Well, S SPP is sports specific and GPP is general specific. And, uh, you know, if you, if you think if you watch a, um, a football game, how many, you, know, you only play seven, eight minutes of football game, everything else would be GPP. At boxing, everybody spars, they hit bags. Outside of sparring, hit bags, you run work road work and all of these other things they do, uh, that would be GPP. You have to have a wide base. If you want to reach the top, you got to go out. I've said this a hundred times. Pyramid is only as tall as its base. So if you don't get a big a GPP, the key to GPP is, though, you the, those exercises should be fairly similar to your sports uh, activities. If they're far off, it actually won't work so much. So you want to keep them close. I mean, 80% of our training is with a small exercise. It's not big squat deadlift, nor is it clean jerk or snatch. Um, the 80, if you look at the Chinese training, they do all kinds of other exercises. Even though they're barbell lifts, like deadlifts, snatch with deadlift, heavy squats, those are really GPP. Mm -hmm. And uh, only, the only two specific things is a clean jerk and snatch for them. So you want to do all these exercises. When you raise that up, I've got a guy in the gym right now. He, he come in, big guy, 209 pounds, can't begin to get to a workout. Good to do two freaking sets. Five sets, five. He got five reps, and then he got two reps, and he got no reps. And I, you know, it, for us, it's amazing. And uh, because we just blow through these. As an experiment last week, uh, on our first week at 80%, I had two people do 20 reps. And they could have done all 25 in one set at 80%. That's, that's GPP. They're in shape. Uh, their GP pot got them in shape. How they do it? Sled pulls, um, K-box. Static dynamic, reverse hypers, uh, good morning machines, good mornings, and so forth. They did it all with those things. You know, don't take a genius to deadlift. Um, I used to deadlift once every month. I was top 10 deadlift three weight classes. And if you go back to the old West Side Barbell, uh, George Friend thought you never deadlift uh, more often than every 10 days. He relied, they taught me basically how to do it. We relied on good mornings and uh, power cleans, shrugs, um, high poles, uh, back raises, and so forth. And hell, that's what it did. You know, everyone that denies that this could work, uh, just think for a second, how much did you deadlift the first time while you're listening to this podcast? You didn't say, how in the hell did I deadlift that much? I never deadlifted in my life. If you deadlifted to 400, how in the hell did you do it? You never deadlifted before. You didn't do specific work. You did general work. Uh, is that, you think yeah. that covers it? Well, it leads up good into the next. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say two things. And this is me. No big deal. But circle max weight squeeze you five sets to two. And this is a tough workout. I had squatted in six weeks because my ribs, as usual, was all messed up. I pulled sleds. I did glute ham, reverse hyper, and abs. That was it. Uh, I was called in because we had some guys in Pittsburgh here, the Steelers and the, and the uh, university. So they wanted me to squat. And I said, what are you going to use? I said, okay, I'll do it. So we're going to use it. It was 45 and 375 pounds of band. I went, Christ, that's my circle max weight. I did five doubles like it and never missed a workout. I was outside one time pulling it, again, a heavy sled. Local cool comes out and, of course, says, we're having a dead in the contest. Get your ass in here. So I go in there. My best pull in the gym is 745. I smoke 775. I had been dead in six weeks. How? GPP. Well, leads into the next question real good is GPP doesn't have a sport. That's correct, where but you're generally building it up or are you trying to make it specific to the sport that's what i talked about if you're you have to pay attention if you're going to use it for a sport you want to do something activities that you don't want to do endurance a lot of endurance exercises like circuit training if you're going to be a you know powerhouse lifter or a sprinter or something like that so how how would a football player I, 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 to me the closest thing to gpp contest would be crossfit because it's what it is is non-directed fitness yes. it truly is I mean, I, I'm all about it, you know. I mean, you're, there probably are the fittest people in the world outside these crazy people running 100 miles and all. And, but it's just, it's undirected fitness. They're never going to send a, a person in Olympic lifting to, you know, to the Olympics or sprinting to the Olympics or uh, gymnastics. To, they're never going to do it because it's, it's non-directed. You have to direct it. Do you think you could pull someone 
out of that pool and then give them direction and they would do good? You mean into a sport? Yeah. If you eliminate everything else, because it's all co contradictory of each other. Yeah. And you can't run five miles and think you're going to be a world record holder playing jerk. It doesn't work that way. You know, uh, <clears throat> the only people that I knew, world class, these were world class uh, weightlifters that didn't do any GPP was the Bulgarians. But they would do uh, 18 heavy lifts every day, six days a week. And on Sunday it was optional, you could just <laughs> other stuff that they wanted. Surely they would have a high burnout rate. They did have a mental high burnout right. rate, but as far as physical, they had no trouble. I had an Olympic, a Bulgarian team Olympic doctor here, said they had no trouble doing the training. It was the mental. Going back in every day, you know, your best clean jerk was 402, and you're doing, you know, uh, 390, and then 396, and then 386, and then 407, and so forth, over and over and over. So that's what got him. <clears throat> it was mental. So on that new lifter, you said that is in the gym. I know it's like water off ducks back to you because you know it, but how did you decide what he needs to do for GPP? Well, first we looked at him, his upper back was so weak he was relying on all lower back and his lower back wasn't that strong, so what happened is he got crushed in his squats. We had to pull the weight off him on the box. This don't happen here, you know. Yep. He's a new guy and I think he's got a, you know fairly decent potential. He needs to gain about 30 pounds. <coughs> we just brought a, a young man in the gym, 21 years old, who was a bull, over 2300 with no gear, and uh, he was 344 pounds. He's been here six, six, eight weeks. Now he's here in 61 pounds, all muscle. He did. He was doing uh, 24 reps of 155 pound dumbbells like nothing. So that. So we've raised his GPP. How are we doing it? Because I throw him with the wolves. I put him with Jake Anderson, who's actually a sheriff now, and he does a lot of stuff for also for jujitsu. He lifts, and in between he just swings kettlebells. You know, I mean. So who the hell's gonna keep up with this crazy guy? But we put him with him because he does a high volume of spatial exercises, small spatial, and Burley Hawk. Burley Hawk is a huge man, almost 400, but he can do a lot of work too. So I put him in with that crowd and with Eric, and uh, right off the bat, he's picking up on it. What would you determine, or universally, the top three lifts or exercises for GPP? Sled, whirl, no, I mean, I, I'd probably say good morning. I think good morning is the king of all exercises. I mean, it's, you know, you call it the death of the king, yeah. which I believe is for sports, it's the best thing you can do. All you football guys out there forever, oh, I can't let my guys deadlift and get hurt. No one ever, well, I don't know how they equate a deadlift with max is beyond me. You know, why can't you do deadlifts at 70% and so forth? That's what Andy Bolton did. First thousand pound deadlift trained mostly around 70%. Yeah. So, um, and then your friend did it another way. Friend pulled uh, H16. He would train, uh, of like, well, 585, he said. Most, and he liked to do it between 5 and 10 reps a set. But he, went, he, he said that he had no more than 585, which means pulled 765. Damn. GPP. Is there any particular uh, rep scheme or time between uh, exercises you do? For powerlifting? For, yeah, we'll say for powerlifting. Uh, actually, I like, um, I like to do supersets like old bodybuilders used to. I've talked about this heavy, heavy set of eight with dumbbell extensions and heavy set of five barbell extension, 15 light pushdowns of a band, back and forth, maybe 15 feet back and forth. It will build tremendous stamina and endurance into the triceps. No one ever thought about this. I never thought you could build two strength, spatial strengths at the same time, but I did. And then as a, an experiment, I got Travis Bell to do it. Travis had a 335 raw bench. Mm -hmm. Three and a half years later, he had a 600 pound raw bench. He did exactly what I did a, a whole way. Plus, Travis would come back that night, as you well know, and he would do a second max effort loop. Work up and max, do another max effort loop. What I would do, I'd go back in, I'd work my arms or whatever I wanted to work. Um, that's how I did it. Do you still split that between upper and lower body days? So on upper day, you do upper body GPP, and lower you do lower well, GPP? That's a good question, because I tell people when you come on your bench day, you do two or three sets of reverse hybrids. Why can't you do three or four sets of dumbbell presses when you come in a squat? Mm -hmm. Just walk in, grab up something you can handle, no warm up, do two, three sets of 15, 20 reps, and then you get ready to squat. Now you're, you're, now you're circulating, everything's ready to go. You're warmed up. You, you know, I want to bring up a point. Everyone, I, I had a, uh, I had a, a major college st uh, coaching staff come here the other day, three of them, and I told them that warm ups are worthless, and so you're, you've got very limited time in, uh, in a university setting for strength training. So, so my people, which are, are you know, as, as a girl who squats 730, a little guy who squats 745, 
They warmed up, did five sets of five, did five sets of five, and did deadlift at 85%. And they finally got a plate on the bar. Now, you know, I, I, the, where's the warm-ups? They didn't do any. They squatted and they deadlifted. That's the activity you're trying to do. You know, you're not, why warm up on some obscure exercise that doesn't do any good? It just doesn't. Because everything has motor patterns. You have to follow the motor patterns. So that brings up rest periods, which seems to be the biggest stumbling block for a lot of people working out. They're like, well, what's the rest period between sets? Well, you try to have training as dense as possible. Right. So how do you choose when you go? Is it just by, it's your turn, you better go? Or do you try... Uh, buffered a little bit more. What, what, years ago, when I trained, I trained a lot with Chuck Vogelpool. We did. Uh, we trained together with one other person. We you have to be squatting every minute fifteen. We did doubles in. Yeah. In my gym, I think you might have been there, Tom. Uh, I got people counting. They're they're over there doing doubles. It's taking seven minutes to get around. Way too many people in the group. I made them do fives. And people said, "Well, why fives? There's nothing to do with fives. It's the percentages. Yeah. And you could. I don't give a damn." But they could do, the fifth rep moves as fast as the second. That's why I moved into five sets of five, get the damn thing over. And But you want to, you have to train, you have to be fatigued. There's no, even top MMA guys, they're slightly fatigued after the first round. Mm -hmm. Slightly fatigued more after the second round, third, fourth, and fifth. You have to train in a fatigued state. If you go out there, if I was to lift a 300 pound bench, I use a certain amount of muscle fiber, I take a long rest, I go do the same weight, and do it again, use the same muscle fiber. How am I ever going to activate more muscle fiber? One way is shorter rest periods. That's why I keep the rest periods as short as possible. When I would squat, I had a, a you know a tremendous lower back pump before my first set, just from the warm ups. But we did we started with um you know two hundred fifty pounds you know it, it would be uh it, it would be uh, two seventy five on the bar and two hundred fifty pound of band is what we started with. We just started with the bar. We just started with band. <laughs> we started with you know whatever that is close to five hundred pounds for the first set. That brings up another good point on, on bar weight. Oh, can I say yeah. two things for a um, Years ago, um, Paul Anderson walked into uh, Bob People's place, and he's a young kid, and he said he wanted to squat. He said he liked to squat. So um, uh, people said, "What do you want? What do you, how much you want to start with?" He goes, "He just said, how much you want to squat?" He said, "I want to squat 550." He said, "What do you want to start with?" He goes, "550." He did three reps of 550. That was a world record at the time. If you go back to bodybuilding magazines, Frank Colombo was a real strong bodybuilder, a little guy, uh, 180 pounds or so, but he never benched, his first bench was 350. Bertie Hawk never benches anything less than 315. If you go down and watch, yeah. he does not take any weights to touch the 350. Well, that brings up the question um, relative to your strength. If you deadlift 800 pounds and I deadlift 500 pounds, the two of us shouldn't start at the same starting weight. No, just use the right same percentage. So and that's where people, I think, get a lot of right. stuff. They but might make 10, 15 jumps. I would like to say I've got the greatest periodization in the world. I took it from the Soviets. Yeah. It's wave three-week wave pendulum wave periodization. And you go up for three weeks, and it's for strength speed. At, you know, we, well, well, the weight lifter would use 75, 80, 85. We use 80, 85, 90. If you're building explosive strength, it's 30, 35, 40. All right? Then you weigh back and do it again. All we do is change the bar. And... Uh, but that's how, but all of our weights are done with, for to benefit a certain spatial strength. You know, it doesn't do any good to do all these tens for two or three weeks and all this. And uh, but I think that's the biggest claim for fame is the periodization. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you come in my gym, two things will happen. Well, we don't have any, but if you got a four hundred pound squatter here, mm -hmm. and he's training with eighty percent, which would be three twenty, and over there you got eight hundred pound squatters putting with six forty, and you tape them, they're moving toward the same speed. Why? Same percent. It's all about velocity training. You have to pay attention to velocity. Strength measures velocity, not poundage. It's yeah. training velocity. Measure, that's how it's measured. That's why Hill's equation, you know, uh, you know, applying f uh, greater force, the barbell's going to slow down. As barbells get heavier, they move slower. Why? You have to apply greater force to lift the barbell. Mm -hmm. Make it real simple. The last question is, is it possible to do too much GTP? Um... Yeah, I don't, personally, when I go in the gym, I only wanted to do two or three things. I was taught that way by the Soviets. My, my workout would be, you know, basically, you know, big squat workout followed by uh, either good mornings or deadlifts. And then it was uh, real heavy glute hamstrings, 135 pounds, uh, 480 pound reverse hypers for four sets of 10 twice a day, four times a week. And then, um, and then uh, heavy abs, that was it. I didn't count abs. I, that's what I did. 
uh, on my Max Every Days, many times I would pull a heavy sled and my feet hurt. You know, I got I got flat feet, and I would pull. So a lot of guys are better sled pullers than me weight wise, but they didn't get mm -hmm. the benefit that I did. And so I pulled a sled till I died. That was my Max Every work, and it worked. Like I talked about in the beginning of the podcast, what I did, you know, it's all done by sled work. If you are truly lacking in a specific area, is it smart to uh, program in extra GPP workouts the following day? Yes. Actually, I prefer to do it the following night. I like to train in the morning. Can't wait, who you mm -hmm. know, I train at 7 in the morning. I can go back at 4 or 5 at night while everyone else gets there for their first workout. But I'm doing my second workout, so I have the same amount of rest they do in the next time we work out, but I got two workouts and I got one. Did it take you a long time to acclimate to that extra volume? Not really. Oh, I just started as I got older. I came out about a retirement, we'll say, when I was 43. Then I was pretty well versed in the Soviet system. Yeah. And I realized if I'm going to keep up with you guys 20 years younger than me, I had to do more work, not less. And that's what I did, more work. Okay. But I did it specifically, yeah. like he was talking about. Like this kid down there, we're, we're busting him up with him because his upper back is so weak, putting all the weight on the lower back, which isn't strong either. So we're putting a lot of upper back rowing and a lot of reverse hypers. We're hitting those two areas. And, uh, you know, a lot of hamstring work, basically. Hope to push his squat and deadlift. We'll find out here in a couple of months when we take him to his first meet. In exercise selection, do you go as a hierarchy of work the weakest first, second weakest, third weakest? Right. The weakest area should be the biggest piece of the pie. Yeah. And what you're really good at, do less. Most people like to do what they like instead of what they need, and it does no good. Remember, Sakari from Finland said, it does no good to be strong in the wrong exercise. And how long would you do that? Would you keep it in there weekly or uh, every three weeks, or does it matter if you're introverted or extroverted? It should change, though. I mean, you yeah. still got to train it. You might want to change exercise. you got to train the same muscle. But, like, if you got a weak lower back, it's eventually should surpass your upper back. Then you got to train your upper back first, then the lower back. Yeah. Or your hamstrings, you know, your hamstrings might be lacking, you train your hands, and get so, I had very, very strong hands. And I had a lady here, ran track for high state and athletes west, then she became world record holder in the squat, 163 pounds. At Ohio State, her hamstring quad ratio was 60 hamstring, 40 quad. Highest ever registered up there. And uh, they said, how did I do it? I said, come down and give me 10 people. Because we concentrate so much on the posterior chain. Uh, well, we talked about a week ago, uh, you know, John, you know, the ARRT stuff, why do people have all these injuries? I, it's just pathetic, it really is. Mm -hmm.